here. If you don't have to go to Europe or South Africa or any place else. You've got all the people right here at the track. Well, let's go out and now and take a look at one of the races. Outside by a neck, Joe Bialetti is second by a half a length. Joe Byrne is third on the inside. By a length and a half, Mr. Challenge is now fourth by a neck. A bit of fire is fifth. On extreme outside, uh, Rusty Rage is now sixth. Real Rage is seventh. And uh, Duty's back. Around the turn is Joe Bialetti in front by a neck. Joe Byrne is second by a length. Twenty's rolling is third by a three quarters of a length. The Rusty Rage is now fourth on the outside by a neck. Hula Hula is Fifth by a half a length. Uh, on the stream outside, Mr. Challenge is now sixth. And a real rate. Around the turn, turning the stretch. And Joe Byrne in front by a length. Joe Bialetti is second by a length. But he's rolling his third by three lengths. Mr. Challenge is now fourth by a half a length. Real rate is fifth. And uh, Murahula. In the stretch. And it's now Joe Byrne in front by two and a half lengths. But he's rolling his second by a length. Joe Bialetti is third by a length and a half, and the rear range on the outside. It's now uh, Joe Byrne and the 20th Roman. Joe Byrne, 20th Roman, and the rear range. Stay out of your box, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> out of your box. Get out of your box, Charlie. And that wraps up our show from Portland Meadows. We'd like to thank all the officials here and all those who took part in today's show. And uh, tomorrow here on Telescope, Connie will be back, and we'll have more guests for you on Telescope, along with Joe LaPrenzi and Ed Berry. We hope you've enjoyed today's show, and there's still a little racing going on out here, but we're taking our leave of Portland Meadows. Doug Lemire saying good morning. This is Portland Meadows, the glass enclosed grandstand. And this is Doug Lemire here at the track at Portland Meadows, where Telescope goes today. You know, here at the Meadows, most people think of the races as each race, as a day's racing card. But there's much more going on here, and it all starts early in the morning. We'll go across the track to the stable area in a few minutes. Right now, we're going to have a couple of commercials and then the news. Things begin in the wee small hours of the morning here at Portland Meadows. And uh, to get the story on how the day begins, the director of racing here at Portland Meadows, Jimmy Woodward. Jimmy, how does the day begin for everybody? Horses, grooms, everyone. Well, Doug, they start real early here in the morning with their 
horses. They start about 6 o'clock every morning. They start right off feeding their horses, graining their horses. How much feed does a horse uh, usually have? Let's say uh, it's a vary from day to day, a day of racing, et cetera? It'll average with each feed, feeding probably a gallon. They'll feed them a gallon of feed uh, plus a, uh, oh, a good bundle of hay. And uh, some feed them hot bran uh, mash and carrot mix. And there's just various types of feed they feed them with. I imagine a feed bill is a very important part of a program for a horse owner and trainer. Yes, it is at the present time with the cost of uh, the hay and the grain and the, all the other materials involved. It runs into a pretty little costly deal. Groom accommodate over 200 people and they serve everything from breakfast right up through dinner, including steaks, lobsters, anything you desire. It's a very plush setup, and the fan who comes here can enjoy the food and enjoy the racing as he's inside this glass enclosed grandstand. And it's temperature controlled, and when it's cool out here in the evenings, it's nice and warm inside. And of course, it's always nice inside, even though the temperature may get up high on the outside. by a neck of you know, horses called Cheeky is second by one length. Dino's baby is third by a neck. Mr. McCaw is fourth by a half a length. Mr. Terry is now fifth by two and a half lengths. Ricky's image is sixth. Direct contact is seventh. Good mixture is eighth and a black mixture. Down the back stretch and it's called Cheeky in front by a length. Dino's baby is second by three quarters of a length. Mr. McCaw is third by a half a length. Uh, go honey, go is a fourth on the outside by a uh, a length and a half, Mr. Terry is now fifth by a neck, Ricky's image is six by five lengths, and a direct contact. Around the turn, and it's gone cheeky now in front by a, a length and a half, but Dina's baby is second by three quarters of a length. Mr. McCaw is now third by a length and a half, go on and go is fourth by a neck. Ricky's image is now fifth, and direct contact. Into the stretch, and it's uh, gone cheeky now in front by uh, three lengths, and between horses, Mr. McCaw is second by a half a length, Dina's baby is third. It's Con Cheeky and Mr. McCaw moving on the outside. Con Cheeky, Mr. McCaw, and between uh, horses, uh, go, honey, go. Now, Mr. McCaw, Con Cheeky, direct contact, and Ricky's image. Well, before each race, the uh, people make their bets and decide what horse they're going to bet on. Behind the scenes, though, there's a lot of work going on. And we're in the calculating room here uh, at Portland Meadows and with uh, Robert McGrew, the manager of Mutuals. And uh, Bob, uh, what goes on back here? Well, Doug, we, we take the uh, figures that a public has bet on the horses, each individual horse and the total pool, and then we figure the payoff prices. That's the prime purpose of this room. And uh, as soon as that post time goes up out there, uh, that locks all the machines, the betting machines? As uh, when the steward, uh, when they release the horses from the gate, the steward presses a button, rings a bell, and all the machines are locked tight. You can't get a ticket after the bell rings. And then uh, you take those figures in here in your calculating room and figure up what the uh, payoff is after you know the winner. Yes. Uh, well, before we get the winner, we're adding the pool and adding the amount of money on each individual horse so that we know when the uh, race is over, when we get the results, then we can uh, compute the prices, uh, the payoff prices. How long does that take? Well, <clears throat> if usually if we don't uh, have a, a close finish, if there's no, not a real close picture, we usually know, uh, get a call from the steward telling us what horse to figure. And it, uh, we usually try to get the prices out within 55 seconds to a minute in 15 seconds. That's a far cry from the old days when that's, they used to have to figure it. That's, that is true. In the old days, we used to have to go down behind the windows with, the, with a pad, count the tickets that the sellers sold, and uh, start figuring from there. But it's, now it's cut oh, in, to a tenth of the time. Thank you very much. Bob McGrew, the manager of Mutuals, and we'll go to another portion of Portland Meadows here in a minute. <laughs> 